read beyond the passages that were prescribed to me for Christian union or scripture union examinations and come across tales about, for example, Moses speaking as God's mouthpiece, ordering the capture and enslavement, clearly for sexual purposes, of 32,000 virgins, I reacted in horror. There, more than any, any, any intellectual problems, were the seeds of my own later disbelief. You commented that our only people who believe in ghosts are in supernatural interventions. In 2007, the Prime Minister of Australia addressed the nation about the severe problem of the drought continuing over the years and urged the urge for people to pray for rain. The point has been made by way of correcting me in my claim that only people who believe in ghosts and the pol and poltergeists and the like still believe in supernatural uh, agents as the causes of natural phenomena. The counterexample was offered that uh, <clears throat> when the drought was uh, at its height in Australia uh, recently, uh, someone or other, who was it? John Howard, John Howard uh, suggested that everyone should pray to God for the drought's cessation. Pray for rain. Well, of course, I, I, I admit, uh, I was overstating the case. There are countless people, especially religionists, who invoke God's agency every day of the week. Whether it's kneeling in prayer or invoking God as the cause of, well, Hurricane Katrina, the, the, the disaster that befell, um, what's the name of this? <laughs> no, 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 um, Hurricane Katrina. It's New Orleans. Um, uh, um, John Hagee, one of the most potent forces for Christian evangelism, televangelism in the States, made the claim that that was God's punishment because the citizens of New Orleans were going to hold a gay parade. Yeah, I, 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 I concede the point. There are, there are others than the secular uh, uh, supernaturalists who believe in those sorts of events occurring repeatedly. Yes? Does the phenomena of uh, former atheists such as Anthony Fleur, uh, Anthony Fleur and Francis Collins, who and later by have turned to belief in God, um, yet retain their disbelief in Santa Claus, does that concern you in any way? Uh, in the case of Anthony Fleur, oh, sorry, the question has been raised um, as to whether I'm concerned at all about the... Uh, you know, figures such as Anthony Flew, who was probably one of the 20th century's foremost atheists, who uh, more recently, in the last three years or so, has uh, expressed belief in some sort of God, though he took a long time to make up his mind as to which one it was. Uh, I am not at all perturbed by that because I have not been at all perturbed by any of Anthony Flew's responses to my letters that have been published and sent to him and to which he has replied, letters in which he showed that he no longer had the sort of intellectual acuity or intellectual powers uh, that he formerly displayed. Sadly, the guy's losing. Mind you, he was persuaded uh, principally by, by virtue of having read the writings of a certain Gerald Schroeder uh, who put forward in effect the, exactly the argument that I uh, 
read out in my own words about the improbability of life having arisen spontaneously. Uh, he was conned by Schroeder and he has never managed to come up with an adequate response. Indeed, in one of his letters to me, he did allow that uh, he has now been reassured by some of his biologist friends that Schroeder's argument was, as I have told him, a con job. Uh, with respect to your memorial for God, oh. can you see it happening soon? If so, why? If not, why not? Can I see a second memorial service which would encompass all gods, theistic as well as pagan, deistic as well as theistic and pagan, ever occurring soon? No, I don't. I omitted a couple of nice little passages that led into and finished up the quote from Mark Twain. He begins with a question, rhetorical question, what do you think of the human mind? And then goes on to describe God's grand army disease and disaster and God's responsibility for it. He finishes up by repeating that question. He says, so what do you think of the human mind in case you think there is a human mind? Look, um, I think that last rhetorical question and Twain's answer captures it nicely. Uh, most people don't, ad don't address the issue seriously. Most people that I know who still believe in God do not address the sorts of problems that I've confronted you with. They are, with due respect, people who uh, well, are akin to the child who believes in Santa and doesn't want to be uh, uh, um, enlightened. There are people who, like one of my dear brothers, doesn't want to talk about it. People like him who, when I he noted, noted that I was about to embark on a debate with William L. Craig, a noted representative of the Campus Crusade for Christ, a very uh, uh, right-wing evangelical group in the US and Canada. Uh, it was called the Hell Debate, and it came up with big posters all around the campus with me depicted in the flames of fire. <laughs> <coughs> when he learned that, uh, he said, I can't believe my God would do that to you, dear brother. And I said, well, in that case, you don't believe Jesus' own words. Look, um, there's a, an easy distancing of oneself when you have certain beliefs from contrary evidence, contrary arguments. I came across it first when I was at Mount Albert Baptist Church in my early teens. My well, late teens too. And I listened to the sermons of Dr. E. M. Blakelock.